All right, guys, welcome to class in yoga. We have the month of June already started. And the theme for this month is find your inner child, come back to that innocence and that joy. So we're going to try to bring some of that energy in our practices this month as much as you're able so we can feel our aliveness and our joy. So let's start seating position here. <clears throat> this is an exercise from uh, Qi Kong, but it's about energy. So anything that has to do with energy is gonna help us anyway. So no matter what tradition and what culture it is from. So it's about using our uh, 10 fingers and two hands. So that's all we need for this. So basically we're gonna tap into certain positions with the hands or the fingers to uh, allow some meridians to open up and help the energy flow better. Because as we know, we are all bioenergy, bioenergy is inside of us, there's energy outside of us. And the more we increase the bioavailability of this energy, the greater we feel and the more joy we can produce. So that's uh, what this can help us with. So we're gonna make a fist. We're gonna gently, not quite gently, but just get a, like a vigorous tap on the sides of your hands here. <clears throat> your thumb is uh, closed in and you just tap the sides of your hand to activate this inner meridians next to the thumb and your index finger. So they recommend to do this about 40 or 60 times. So we're gonna do Maybe we'll probably get to 40 easily because this is easy to do. So we're gonna tap, tap, tap here. And you do wanna breathe naturally. Okay. Now we're gonna release the hands and shake them down a little bit to transfer the energy around. <clears throat> These are simple things we can do even when we sit at the desk. If you happen to sit or write or focus or do something for a long time, you need to keep the energy moving and simply you can use your hands instead of using your whole body. Now we're gonna tap on the inside of the hand, the small uh, finger, the little finger. So we're gonna keep the palms out in front open and we tap the sides of the palm. Breathe in and out. The breathing has to be on its own. It doesn't have to be connected with the movement. <clears throat> Opening up the meridians in the hands and fingers. So we have a lot of meridians in the body and more chakras than we know in regular yoga tradition. We think there's just seven of them, but there's actually 108 in the body and one outside the body. So that makes 109. And same with the meridians, there are hundreds of them. So we're gonna release the hands again, make sure we relax the shoulders and upper arms. <clears throat> and a major chakra or meridian point where we draw energy into it's in the middle of the palm. So we will stay uh, with the right palm open and then we're gonna tap with the left fist into the middle of the palm. So maybe your knuckles are gonna connect to the middle of your other palm. 
to really open and activate this meridian, this channel in the middle of the hand, which has to do uh, directly with the heart and lungs. <clears throat> All right, now we will switch. Left hand stays out, and now right fist is going to press into the middle of the palm. Just tap, 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 like you're knocking on a door, on the door of your great energy. <laughs> All right, very good. Let's raise the hands again, relax through the shoulders, through the arms. Take a deep breath. Make sure you come back to your breath. Give it a chance for us to feel this energy. And then we're gonna bring the inside of the palms together. You're forming a flower or a lotus. Imagine you're holding a lotus in your hands. And you tap this meridian at the edge of your wrist. Breathe in and out naturally. This one is for the spleen, which is responsible for taking any toxins, any, any toxins, any residue out of the body, kind of processing the extra stuff that doesn't serve us. So we're increasing that spleen power, that bile production. <clears throat> All right, now we release the hands again, make sure they're Relax, shake them down a bit. Okay, now we're gonna tap the back of the hands. This is gonna feel a little bit more uncomfortable. So you can tap the back of your hand by crossing your hands like that. So you tap the back of the hands like so. And you may feel a little bit more tenderness here. There's a little bit softer energy needed me right in this area. And it is an important area for sugar metabolism. It helps our insulin be regulated in the bloodstream and it can help us with cravings. All right, release that, make a fist, release that tension if you're getting any into your elbows or shoulders. Okay, now it's about the fingers. This is an area between uh, the index and the thumb. In that little crease, we're gonna tap into that crease with our both hands. So this is for tension headaches, migraines, or neck tension too. So we're just gonna activate this area. It's a nice release. Gets the body feeling relaxed. You can also put pressure in this area, but then you have to do them one by one. In this way, we get them both at the same time. So it's more efficient. When we have a little time, if you want to increase the energy, we just can just sit as you watch TV or do whatever 
and um, you can work on this. Okay, release. Now we're gonna do all fingers. They're gonna interlace and release. Interlace and release. There's important meridians as well between the fingers. So we're gonna activate a lot of them. And it's gonna go even to the neurons of the brain. <clears throat> So as you know, we're gonna have a full uh, six week Qigong series in uh, July, starting July 10th, but that's gonna be on a Sunday at nine. So we're gonna learn a lot more about this energy that's available to us and how to increase it, enhance it, and use it for our benefit. <clears throat> as I trained in about 2005 with uh, international master Ling Kai Ting that lives in Europe actually. And um, I learned a lot and then I practiced as I needed. I did not always practice, but uh, it does help me anytime I do. <laughs> All right, great, really start, shake out the hands, make a fist and close real fast. Now rub the hands together now. <clears throat> Now, hopefully your hands are clean and you trust them. We're gonna cover our eyes with our hands. Just put a little pressure and breathe three times. This sends a message of release or relaxation to the eye muscles, the optic nerve. And brings that relaxation feeling in the eye area. And it helps when we look much at the screen or we watch TV for too long or we have to focus on a task. It just relaxes the eyes and get them a chance to release that tension. And release. Okay, now we have a couple more areas I was thinking of. Uh, three fingers above your wrist. There's a point for the intestines. So we're gonna press that point with the thumb and the index finger is gonna press on the point on the outside of the wrist. So on the inside is the intestines. On the outside, it's called the gates to the spirits. So we connect with our higher self in that way. So put pressure here as you inhale and release it as you exhale. And pressure again, with each inhale you press, with the exhale you release the pressure. So it's right about here. And release, inhale, press. Exhale, release. And this also helps with Tummy indigestion with gas. <laughs> if you feel like too bloated and you're struggling with your uh, elimination, it's a good point to press. And then we'll do the same on the other side. Exhale, release. Inhale, press. All right, last one there. Good, we have uh, one more point I have in mind. It's a kidney meridian. It's called K27. So it's gonna be from the nipple line. We're gonna go up. Before we get a collarbone, it's in that line. We're gonna find a little indentation below the collarbone. So we're gonna press in that area as you inhale, you put some pressure. It can be a little tender. It's right under the collarbone in the nipple line. So K27, it's a kidney meridian, the uppermost uh, channel of the kidney. 
But it's also important because this is where the yin and the yang energy flip. They transfer into each other. So it's a good point to activate when we get tired, exhausted, fatigued. <clears throat> because kidney, of course, that connected to the adrenals. So you get that nice uh, adrenal fatigue to go away for a bit at least. But the more you practice, consistency, of course, helps. You cannot say, oh, I did it once and I'm good for 10 years. No, <laughs> it doesn't work like that. But we just have little tools and practices we can use. Okay. One more. This one, sometimes it's easier to cross your hands. This kind of gives you a nice little hug as well. So you can do it with your cross hands. <clears throat> Another point, it's right in the back of the neck at about the level of C4 and five. Uh, so it's in the middle of your cervical vertebrae. So we have one up here right below the skull and seven is right above here. So somewhere in the middle, you're going to have a point that's called Ming Men. It's called the gate to the heavens. So when we activate and keep this area open, we just have great energy in the brain. Our psychic power is good. Our mind is balanced. And because we get that influence from the universal knowledge, that universal power. So we can put pressure there, either with both hands, pressing the fingertips into the vertebrae, maybe on the side of the vertebrae, so you're not impinging directly on them. The general area, because if you use all your fingers, you may be along a few of them, not just one. Hi, Ravati. <clears throat> So about C4, C5. And over here, it's always good to move into a sliding massaging action. So bring your right hand and the left sliding in the back of your neck, just moving, circulating that energy, waking it up. Okay, then bring your hands right behind your shoulders and pull forward, just releasing some tension here. Exhale as you pull, you grab those muscles of the trapezius and bring it forward, just releasing them a little bit. Use enough pressure so you can feel them sliding over the bone of the humerus. Nice. All right, and release that. Now shake your hands again, relax through the fingers, maybe all the way through the elbows. Okay. Now we will uh, try to feel this energy we created. So let's go ahead and wrap the palms together. Rub a little bit hard, feel that energy increasing. And now rub your fingernails together. We activate all these beautiful meridians in the fingertips. Now drop the hands down right at the level of the navel, just right in front of you and start to Feel how your fingertips have an electric, electromagnetic sensation that are being pulled towards each other. So then you start to pulsate this chi ball just out and in. You're trying to expand it and grow it. And you may feel that pull in the middle of the palm in that one chakra or meridian there. That works like a suction cup when we put our palms towards the earth or the sky, it's going to draw in energy. So it's a very strong end of a channel or meridian. 
Okay, so see how you feel your own bioenergy. And when you got a sense of it, maybe bring it to an area that needs it right now. Maybe to the belly and the chest or your knee. Just nourishing yourself with this fresh and vibrant chi. Inhale and receive it. Smile. Enjoy this gift of chi. And go ahead and release. Now, another great thing to do when we see a lot of the legs like that, we need to wake up the energy with this tapping chi massage. So we're gonna cup our hands and tap the legs down to wake them up and to get that energy flowing. And then get your top of the legs. Release. Okay, then go on the inside, all the way down to the ankle. Nice, and circle around. All right, great, point and flex the feet. And we can activate some feet meridian too, if you'd like, make sure your, uh, uh, how do you call those here? This bony excrescence is not gonna hurt too much because some of us have those kind of overgrown so they can hurt, but if they don't hurt too much, just go ahead and tap the sides of the feet to activate the spleen meridian. Because that's the end of the spleen meridian on the inside of the feet. Okay, great. All right, now let's transition to um, heart melting pose. So we will be into um, child's pose, but on the elbows. So the hips stay up over the knees and we allow the chest to drop towards the floor. And the head is gonna hang towards the floor as well. So keeping the hips high, we're allowing that natural curve to be created in the back. And the chest opens and drops naturally towards the floor. Connect to the breath and find a good place here where you can hold for a while. Release any tension at the base of the neck or the sides of the neck. Soften through the facial muscles, the jaw. And the whole head, the back of the neck lengthens. Just let everything hang including your belly and feel your heart melting towards the ground. It's a softening, releasing pose. We get to observe the subtle changes of the low back, that area between the hip crest and the rib cage. Noticing the muscles between the shoulder blades. Make sure you're not holding any tension. If you do find any tension, any holding, any holding, breathe it out.
Now we're going to add a modification here. Bring our right elbow to the center so you have more support and extend the left arm out, sliding it out, opening from the armpits and all the way through the hand. At this point, if it feels too much to hold your head, just drop it to that right forearm. <laughs> But keep allowing this left side to drop. Let it sink. You're gonna feel more release under the rib cage and around the heart, the side of the rib cage and under the armpits. You may go all the way into the psoas. Stay here and notice, breathe slowly, deepening the inhalation. Find a pause. And then a long and complete exhalation. Releasing any tension, any negative emotions, anything that makes our heart afraid or protected by unnecessary layers. Three more breaths here. So this was about a five minute pose, which is really good to have this nice length amount of practice for these body parts that are usually very tense and tight. We take longer to open and to be comfortable in that openness. Inhale, and now we will switch gently, bring that left elbow in towards the center and extend the right arm out. You may rest your head on that. And allow this right side to drop towards the floor. Your hips are still high, but your belly may be closer and closer to the floor, and so your chest. Allow the breath to help you to release, to let go, to soften the edges on this part of the body. Finding out any stagnation, transforming it, transmuting it into liberation. The back of the arm, the back of the shoulder blade, the side body, the rib cage, the armpit, everything is going to open allowing all this beautiful energy to circulate throughout our body system, nourishing and nurturing every muscle, every tendon, every body cell. Bring in aliveness, breathing out tension, stress, Feeling in joy, bring a smile on your face as you inhale. And another smile as you exhale. Enjoy the present moment, finding the beauty in the present moment. What makes it so beautiful? What makes it so amazing? It's your presence that makes it so.
just like if you're walking by on this beautiful path in a meadow, but you're blindfolded, you're not looking, you don't see anything. Well, here, we don't wanna be blindfolded. We wanna have this openness, this curiosity, this explorative look into our own selves, into our own body. So we get to understand, connect, receive, allow, and enjoy. All right, let's come on off of that one and let's gently transition to the belly. Drop all the way down. Bring the arms to the side, palms up and turn the head to the right. So maybe left ear touches the floor. And let your body rest here and recover in inverse Shavasana with a nice uh, light. Um, twist in the neck. So we're opening some channels on the left side, under the skull, down into the shoulder, and we're squeezing and compressing a little bit on the right, kind of wringing any stagnant energy out, and releasing it through the out breath. Feel up the lungs to the max and feel your body starting to sense a floating experience when you have your lungs full. Imagine your body light and floating. No worries, no concerns, no weight in the body, no material matter. Just feel it fluffy and light and floating. Have a sense of being in the spirit, not in the body. Because that's where everything happens at that higher level of consciousness. Not in our fear, not in our anxieties. Transcending all of those, then we find ourselves, we find our truth and our freedom. Gently turn the head to neutral, dropping the chin to the floor. And stay in this position, opening the front of the neck. If it's too much for your neck, maybe you wanna put your hands underneath your forehead and just stay like that. But it should be okay. We are decompressing the front side of the cervical vertebrae and we are slightly compressing the back end and then we get to reverse. And now bring the chin to the chest, lift the nose off the floor, and then drop the forehead to the floor. So your chin is tucked in, lengthening the back of the neck. This activates our thyroid and parathyroid glands and connects and activates the pineal gland that lays deep into the brain, right in the center, like um, between the eyebrows, but deep inside your head. Pineal gland is responsible to release this hormone for sleep, melatonin. Then during the day, it would release serotonin. So we wanna have this Pineal gland activated and balanced. And now let's go ahead and turn the head to the left.
And allow yourself to feel this support and connection with Mother Earth. Allow all your body cells to draw in, soak in this energy that's grounding and stable and strong. And feel cared for and supported. A few more breaths here. Slow down your heart with those longer exhalations. Smoothing off the edges of your emotions. Allowing anything that needs to be seen to come out. All these emotions we hold in the body, they are like little children. They want to be seen, they want to be acknowledged, and then they go on their merry way. So we need to acknowledge what comes up, even if it's something that we may not like how it feels in a moment. But if we don't acknowledge it for what it is, we will end up suppressing it, and then we'll be stored in the body, and will come up when we least want it or need it. And that's not what we want either. So processing them as they come, thoughts, ideas, emotions, see them, acknowledge them, and let them go. So inhale, bring the head back to center. Maybe now bring the hands underneath your forehead and we bend the knees and keep the heels aligned with the knees and just let our hips release in the front. Let the gravity take care of that natural stretch. So it's a very simple pose, but very beneficial. And it does take time to allow those hips to center and balance and reassess their position. So be patient here, breathe and allow the magic to happen. So ideally, eventually, our hip flexors, like the middle of the hip joint, where we get that 90 degree angle when we sit, this area needs to actually be touching the floor in, in good alignment. If we're a little bit off, you may not touch the floor right now. Or maybe one side touches and one side doesn't. Then your hips are a little bit uh, out of balance. If it helps at all, you can also sway the feet a little bit side to side until you find that place where you feel it's good to stay. So we explore a little bit, like that curiosity of a child comes back, exploring into your own hips, looking from inside out. How do you see the world looking from within? And how does your body, how does your hip really feel when you're inside of it? Is it angry? Is it painful? Is it tight? What do you hold in your hips? Whatever you hold is probably not good, so let it go.
And besides holding babies, we don't hold anything good. So let it go. The body becomes a junkyard of the mind. We think certain things, other people think certain things about us. And we receive them as true and we store them in the body because we don't know what to do with them. So let it go, process it out, release it. And now, since we have those heels nicely close to each other, we can tap the heels together. This will activate the, the sciatic nerve meridian. So your whole leg is going to feel better and stronger and more relaxed, more flowing just by tapping into our sciatic nerve. It's the biggest nerve in the body. It's very important without this nerve working, we will not be walking. All right, great. Release the feet down. Let's come on up slowly, press into the hands and stretch back to a child's pose for two or three breaths. All right, inhale and come on back to center. We're gonna do a forward fold, but we will use our tennis balls underneath the uh, quadrature's muscles. So we'll stretch the legs forward and bring those tennis balls separate and lean them right against the back of your legs. And then we're gonna exhale and hinge forward a little bit. Okay, you guys found them perfect. So get them out of your little socket and lay, bring them underneath your, um, in the middle of your hamstring, really. And then lean forward. So this is gonna make you lean forward a little less because you're gonna feel that intensity of the stretch behind the legs. You're gonna feel that pressure. So hang forward and let that spine go. Let it lengthen naturally and sink your body forward without forcing it. Just let it hinge forward and let it go. This will take care of this thick and strong and very tight hamstring muscle. It's uh, hamstrings means a lot of muscle fibers strung together. So they're very dense and very tight right now. We're allowing them to release. If your head at any point feels like it needs a little bit of support, you can always bring your small bolster and rest your head on that. But you can also let the head hang that will stretch the back of the neck and give you a nice release at the base of the neck. 
and shoulders. Great, that will be all you want to focus on the breath and where the breath goes. And send the energy to any point that feels depleted, stagnant, or stuck. Let go through the out breath. Energize and smile as you inhale. Relax, let go, and soften as you exhale. Bring the smile on your face. Just reminding your heart to smile and then your mind to smile. And notice your low back. What do you feel the most sensation right now? Is it down the back of one leg? Is it at the base of the spine or the middle of the spine? This works really well on the area L4 and L5, which happen to be the most compacted vertebrae in the body, the side 67 and 4 and 5. But anyway, there's quite a few we need to open. So this is one of them. And allowing the time to do this naturally and gracefully is going to be most beneficial. So we're going to stay here a few more minutes. No need to run away, to go anywhere. Just be here and enjoy the present moment fully. As the hamstrings release, it's going to relax the whole back because all those muscles are connected with each other. Even if not indirectly, they're connected through that fascia that wraps around the whole body system. So we are releasing that fascia right now, sending a message of relaxation to the blood, to the whole back muscle fibers. Those that run against the spine, those that run against the neck. Just really feeling that release and that freedom. Now we're going to create the same pose, but we're going to move the tennis ball right at the uh, gastrocnemius, your calf muscle, right at the base of your calf. And then we're going to lean forward again. So under your calf muscle, position them right there, and then lean your body forward. Our calves do all the running, all the walking, and they get really tight. So this may be a little tense too. It's gonna grab your attention a little bit. But the way you control this um, intensity is by pulling back a bit or leaning forward more. So you decide how much you need here. Any kinks in the back body are going to be released by this pose. We're going to really take more time to grab more benefits. You'll find yourself walk rather and feel taller as you finish this practice today. So 
we can reap the benefits right away. Now, if you had sensation on one side of the leg, you may notice that that sensation is traveling up towards the spine. That is a good sign. Because any pain and discomfort and misalignment, it's gonna try to centralize itself, which means it's gonna try to go to the center of your body, which is the spine. And that's where it gets healed or transformed. So uh, that's. Good if you feel that sensation traveling up. And if it hasn't been completed, you may have to do this pose even longer or repetitively. If you really got a chance to feel how this helps you here, I'll do it again and again because um, it will help even more. All right, two more breaths here. Inhale, slide back up and release that. Now we will go on our backs, but we will put the uh, therapy balls right on the outside of the spine in between the shoulder blades, close to the neck, but not super close. Okay, so we're gonna lean down on that. <coughs> And then we can support the head and have the knees bent just so we can control that intensity because it can be quite a bit if you've never done this before. So head supported in the cradle of your hand. Knees are bent, feet to the floor a little bit on the side at the edge of the mat. And take some nice long breaths here. If you feel okay, or you can move the head from side to side. And then moving and shifting that energy, that pressure around a little bit to release more tension. So maybe bring one elbow down, one elbow up, kind of sinking into a little twist here. Those are very intense areas of deep tension. So they may feel a lot of resistance. Work with the breath here again, inhaling fully through the nose, deep, long, and full inhale. Hold the breath for the length of the inhalation. And then exhale, longer in the inhale and the pause.
All right. For the last few minutes, we're going to bring just one tennis ball behind the hard area of the head, right on that area that would touch the pillow first. And then lean your head on that on the floor. And this is a great point to send an impulse of relaxation to the whole nervous system. That's why when we put our head down on the pillow, we feel like we want to sleep, right? It's the same thing here. We activate that point a little bit stronger with this pressure action. So allow the breath to soften, allow the body to relax, the mind to be open and free of thoughts. Enjoy this precious moment. Now release the uh, therapy ball, put it to the side. I'm gonna stay here in Shavasana for the next few minutes. You can keep your knees bent if you want, just to release that low back continuously. And bring the right hand to the heart and left hand to the belly. And imagine you can breathe into the lower belly. Breathing in fully. And breathing out completely. Notice how the belly rises and falls with the energy of the breath. Notice the heart beating under your hands. And notice this aliveness, this well being in the body, this clarity and space in the mind. One hour of practice. Change your blood chemistry, your brain chemistry, and your emotional balance. Notice how this breath pattern is circular. It's not linear. It doesn't start at point A and finishes at point B. It continuously moves in a circular pattern. Breathe in, breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out. It's changing this flow of gases with the universe. We give away CO2 and we get O2. Perfect balance. We need oxygen, plants need carbon dioxide. It's an even deal. We love to share with this universe in such a good way.
And now we take a moment and scan the whole body, toes, ankles, lower legs, knees, thighs, and hips. Soften through the belly, through the chest. Arms are light and free of tension. Check the back and the sides of the neck. The front of the neck, the jaw and the face. Now smile at your internal organs, smile at your heart, smile at the corners of your lips, take another smile into your mind, into your brain, just reviving everything, refreshing everything of this great energy of happiness and joy. Know that your body will benefit greatly from your practice for the next 24 to 48 hours. Deep in the breath, start to move the fingers and toes, wake up the body. Stretch the arms, open the eyes, see a different world around you, more happiness and joy, more opportunities. And turn to your right and come on up when you get up. Come on up to your side and get up slowly. Bring our hands to the heart, supporting our own heart center, taking a deep breath, energizing the heart, and saluting each other in the world. Namaste. You are welcome. You're welcome, Navati. Good to see you. And uh, I have an announcement for our greater yogi community. I am um, getting close to publish a book, so I'm going to let you post it about when it's going to be out. And maybe some of you would want to read it ahead of time so you can give me some feedback. So let me know. All right.